Hi everyone, I'm Simon from HomeSite and today we are looking at the new two-year integration. It's in beta at the moment, but it's pretty cool. Let's go. Now in the essence of full disclosure, Tuya have asked me to make this video. They've also sent me a bunch of devices to test it for them. But it does mean that I've got the, the latest information and, and the full support of the Tuya team. Now, before you scream sell out at your screen, that doesn't mean that I don't believe in the application and the development that they've been putting in. Because if I didn't believe in that, I would not have made this video. So if you've heard of Home Assistant, I'm pretty sure you've probably heard of Tuya. And you've probably got some of their devices, whether you know it or not, because Tuya make the chips that are white labeled into so many different products these days. Now, the essence of Tuya is that you can use them in Smart Life or Tuya apps. Now, the app's really good. Um, actually, as, as far as the smart home apps go, it is pretty good. Now, they're not all that customizable, and they do rely on PaaS, so Platform as a Service, P-A-A-S. Now, some of these are hosted in China, um, and I know that we, as the generally as the home assistant community, um, would much prefer it to be locally controlled. But in some instances, you can't quite get there. Now, for some people, it's really easy to use something like the Tuya app that connects direct to your Wi-Fi or even through a Zigbee smart gateway. Now, Tuya are putting a lot of effort into their development at the moment. They're fully aware of the, the drive to local, um, but equally, they want to offer their clients the ability to have a really good app. And why not have a bit of both as well? So one of the benefits of having it cloud hosted it obviously means you can use it from anywhere without having to open any holes in your firewall for the, to, to connect directly to your home assistant. But there's a downside. You lose control and speed. There's often a latency. As soon as you hit the button, it has to then call an API, send that off to the PaaS platform. And then eventually it turns your light on and off or your sensor triggers or, or whatever that thing is. Now, this two-year version two integration relies on a new API. It is currently in beta, so it's not fully released yet. And there is a few little hurdles which you're going to need to get through if you want to try it out. But the really good news is that in Q3, they are planning on releasing it officially so that it will be fully integrated into Home Assistant and you'll be able to add it as an integration in the same way as you add any of the standard integrations. Now, they're, they're suggesting that it's in Q3, so that's anywhere from the 1st of July through to the end of September. They're also suggesting that local control will be available within that release as well, which is amazing news for us all in within the Home Assistant community. Now, there are some devices that aren't supported at the moment, and I will post a link in the description for the wiki page for supported and non-supported devices. I'll, of course, also post all of the links to all of the pages that you will need to get through this quick tutorial. Last but not least, there is a little gotcha in this video that if you've created a project within the, your IoT platform, within the two-year IoT platform, before May 25th, you will need to create a new one. So it won't work with old APIs. And if you don't have a clue what I'm talking about at that point, don't worry about it because you probably don't have one. Now, let's get going. So within about 10 minutes, you're going to have your, your Home Assistant configured with a new two-year two API. So lastly, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you find it useful. I hope you subscribe to my channel and I hope you give this video a like as well. See you on the other side. So for the sake of this video, I'm going to assume a couple of things. A, you're not a two-year developer. Otherwise, I guess, why would you be watching this video? B, that you have hacks installed already. C, that you have a fairly stock version of Home Assistant. You've got some two-year devices, otherwise, Again, why are you doing this other than to look at my lovely face? Now, if you don't know what Hacks is, Hacks is the Home Assistant Community Store. It's basically some integrations that people have written that haven't yet got fully brought into Home Assistant. So they can be in beta, which means they haven't been fully tested yet. So you might get some problems. But Home Assistant Community Store or Hacks is a really simple way of adding other, other things and other customizations into your Home Assistant. And if you check out my channel, there'll be another video on how to install that.
Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to this website, and this is going to take you an almost step by step guide. Now, it can be a little bit confusing. There's multiple options in there, but that's exactly where I'm just going to step in and give you a step by step guide that's really easy to follow and how to get through this. So here we are in my hacks. We're going to click on these three little dots in the right hand corner and click custom repository. Now, a repository is it's like a place where all the software is stored and you need to tell your home assistant where to go and look. Now, as you can see here, there's a bunch in here already. However, to add the two year two beta application in there or integration, we need to add this URL. So you can click right down at the bottom and paste in this URL, change that drop down box to integration and simply click add. The box doesn't disappear once you've clicked add, which confused me for a second there, so I clicked it twice, and hence I've got an error the second time round. But, okay, it's successfully loaded. Now if we click add down here, we can see local choose there, but that's not the one we want, we want two year two. So if we start typing two year, here we go, we can click, we want to install that bit of software. It tells you a bit of information about it, Gives you the supported device types now not all devices are supported at this point in time now this is july 2021 so by the time you're watching this who knows they might be but we're going to go ahead and install so we click install this repository in hacks down at the bottom right hand corner it gives you the version you can choose different ones but i'm just going to go ahead and install the latest one which is 1.3.1 .1. install shouldn't take very long but as you can see here, we've got pending restart at the top. Now, don't be tempted to skip this step because it is absolutely needed. You do need to restart your home assistant at this point. So clicking on hacks on the left hand side again, you can see pending restart. So we're going to click on the little cog in the bottom left hand corner. Configuration, maybe just behind my head here. I'm going to hit check configuration because it's always a good thing to do before hitting restart underneath server management. Now, you'll get this nice little reconnecting box down in the bottom left hand corner, which is telling you that Home Assistant is restarting, it's lost connection, but it should reconnect for you automatically. So give that a couple of seconds, maybe get a cup of coffee. Maybe you subscribe to my channel to make sure you don't miss out on any killer videos. And when it's back, it should take you straight back through. And if you click on hacks, then you should see that that pending restart banner has disappeared. And we can go into our configuration into our integrations and in theory we should have a two year two integration which we do but before we do that we need to go to this url here and we need to sign up for an account now this is like a development account but it doesn't mean you have to be a developer you don't need any coding skills at all so don't worry about that simply fill in your information agree to the t's and c's and enter the code it sent you in your email. Now, I sat looking at this screen for quite a while before, you know that little box, that little line underneath that says always check your spam folder and you never do? Well, in this occasion, I needed to. So eventually, once I checked my spam folder, there was about five codes in there, of course, because I hit that resend multiple times. I put the code in and I've got my account. So now I can log in. It gives you all the normal sort of gump about this is the navigation and then you're looking at it going what the hell am i doing well if you skip the step like i did where you chose whether you're individual or a, a group developer you'll need to go to account top right hand corner and choose individual developer once you've done that you can go back to the home page and you'll need to go to cloud and you can go to any one of these and it'll take you to the same page but for now we'll just go to cloud and development now it says here you need to subscribe to cloud development now you can get the free trial which is all of zero pounds a year so sign up to that it does have a link saying buy now but obviously it's zero pounds and and so far it's not asked for any credit card details submit the order and once that's complete, it gives you these cloud development plans. Now you can check the contract. Now note here, it does show the effect, the expiry date uh, this time next year. 
So I imagine if Tuya haven't released their, their full integration at that point, it would expire. So I'm going to jump back to Home Assistant, add integration, and find my Tuya 2. Now here you have to choose whether it's home, smart home or custom development. Now if it's a zero, that means it's smart home, which is the one you want. And there's various bits of information you need here. So first of all, access ID. So I'm going to show you how to get all of this information. So if you go to cloud on the left-hand side in development, you can see I've got a few of these sort of um, projects already. But if you create a new project, you can call it whatever you want. Call it to your two beta. You don't have to put description, choose an industry. Make sure you click on smart home and not custom development. Choose the availability zone which you're in. So I'm going to put Europe and Western Europe. You can choose all of them if you want. It's just a sort of ties it down to a certain area. Now on the left hand side, these are all the available APIs or application programming interfaces. So the only one you need to add is this device status notification. All of the rest of them are there by default. Once you've added that one in, it's the one right at the bottom. Hit authorize and it will take you to this screen. Now, all of a sudden here on the left hand side, you can see access ID. So that was that first thing we needed. So we're going to take a copy of that and put it into this box here. Next, we need the access secret. So I'm going to copy that and paste that one into here. Mobile app, choose whether you use two year smart or smart life. Country code, this is the first part of your phone number. So plus one for the States, plus four, four for the UK and enter your username and password. Now this is the one you use for your app on your phone rather than the IoT platform that we've just signed up to. Now before you hit submit, hopefully I've caught that quick enough, you need to link your devices by the app account. So you go to link devices, link devices by app account and click add app account. Now it comes up with the, one of these QR codes. Now if you get your smartphone, and open up the app. If you go to me, as it is on an iPhone anyway, you can click on the little bit that looks a bit like a barcode scan at the top right and scan that. As soon as you've done it, like it shows there, it's linked it to your account. Now I can see I've got three devices, which I know is right because I've got a gateway, I've got a socket, and I've got a, a thermostat. That's done, there we go. So that's all added. So I can now either select these and put them in certain areas. There's my socket and my temperature humidity sensor. I can hit add. You can see in this bottom right hand corner, you can see that I've got these three devices, sorry, two devices and three entities. Cool. So can I control my socket? Let's give it a go. Here we go. It's pretty cool. So you can see the, uh, the red light changing on my socket there and it was instant there was no camera trickery there it was instant so it's better than the two-year original application programming interface or the original two-year integration here's my temperature humidity sensor as well and you can see on the screen 23.5 which is bang on what it says through the integration now something i'm always interested in is two-way communication if i control it through my phone Will it also update the status in my home assistant? Because it really bugs me when they don't. So let's try it. Yep. Again, no camera tricky. This is all shot exactly the same time. So you can see that that is down near instant. And you can see the, the red light going on the socket. You can see the switch going in home assistant as I press it on my iPhone. So you've made it this far, that's got to be a good sign. Either that or you ran off into the garden deciding you never want to touch a piece of technology again. I really hope this video has helped you get your two-year two integration working through hacks. And I really hope you've liked this video and you've subscribed to my channel and I hope you'll watch my next one. Thank you very much. I'd love to see any comments down below, anything that I can improve upon, anything you'd like to see me do within reason. Uh, thank you very much and I'll see you next time.